من بعدها انتقلنا لمتابعة تصميم مراحل حقيبة الإنسانية لنتكلم عن هذا التصميم قبل أن ننتقل للتعرف على أسرار إنتاجه إذا مش كل الحقائب سهلة تجميع مثل الحقيبة اللي اشتغلت عليها حقيبة الإنسانية باج إذا منلاحظ إلى قطع كثير وإلى تفاصيل عديدة النتيجة النهائية هي طبعا شكلها بهالأسلوب ولكن كل هالقطع اللي موجودة على البورد هي قطع تتصنع كرمال توصل لهالنتيجة كان لنا أيضا وقفة مع الأندي باج التي تعتبر من أساسيات الدار التي حافظت على شكلها عبر العقود نظرا لعمليتها واستمراريتها من حيث المظهر العام والنوعية التي تزداد جمالا مع الاستعمال جميل بهيدا اللون بهالحقيبة أنه لما بيتم وضع اللوجوز على الجلد بيتغير لون الجلد فبيبين كأنه الحقيبة مصنوعة من لونين لنتكلم عن بعض هذه الجلود الموجودة في كتيب خاص في كافة متاجر كارولينا أرارا حول العالم إيماناً من الدار بضرورة نشر الوعي فيما يتعلق بالأنواع المتخصصة والحصرية لدى العلامة التجارية الجميل في تسمية هذه الجلود كونها تشير إلى أسماء أشجار تعكس خصائصها هيا بالميرا سابينا موكان باوباب سيكويا سيريزو أبيدول وغيرها هذه الأسماء الإسبانية تشير إلى الجذور وميراث هذه الإكسسوارات التي تتغنى بخلفيتها التي تعتمد على تبادل القدرات المعرفة والتفاني عبر الأجيال من المشاغل إلى المتاجر حول العالم نتابع مع امرأة كسرت القواعد التي قيدها بها المجتمع الذكوري في القرن الثامن عشر حقيبة البارات فقد خاطرت جان بارات كل شيء في سبيل حبها لعلم النبات أو البوتانيكلز لتتحول إلى أول امرأة تبحر حول العالم متنكرة بزي رجل ربما هذه القصة تبدو خيالية من حيث التحديات المفروضة على النساء في التاريخ ولكنها تتحول إلى مصدر إلهام لهذا التصميم الذي يحتفي بقدرة النساء على المساهمة في تحويل المجتمعات ودفعها للتأقلم والتطور آخذين بعين الاعتبار هذا الدور الرئيسي الذي لطالما كان مهمشاً حقيبة الأندي التي كنا قد اطلعنا عليها في المعمل هي تحية تقدير واحترام للفنان أندي وورهول بعد أكثر من 25 عاما على لقائه بمؤسسة العلامة التجارية المصممة كارولينا أرارا تعتبر هذه المجموعة من الأنجح تجاريا والأكثر طلبا نتابع مع الحقائب التي استمدت وحيها من أشخاص نافذين في قطاع الأزياء كديانا فريلاند التي كانت السبب في دفع المؤسسة كارولينا رارا في تقديم مجموعتها الأولى في العام 1981 فريلاند كانت محررة وصحفية ذا عصيتها من خلال عملها مع أشهر المجلات مثل هاربرز بوزار وفوغ وكانت مستشارة لقسم الأزياء في المتروبوليتن ميوزيوم Of art. تحتفي هذه الحقيبة بأسلوب ونمط حياة محررات الموضة الملائمة للاستعمال اليومي أما بالنسبة لدوما إنسانيا فتشير إلى عشق المصممة كارولينا رارا لرياضة ركوب الخيل في مرحلة شبابها عالم الفروسية والسروج فن العمل بالجلود لإنتاج ملحقات ركوب الخيل تتشارك بكل تأكيد مع قيم دار كارولينا أرارا 
لنتكلم عن الخط الذي لاقى رواجا كبيرا في الاونه الاخيره حقيبه الانسانيا التي تابعنا جميع مراحل انتاجها في المشغل منذ بعض الوقت الأحرف الأولى من العلامة التجارية تعبر عن دعائم هوية دار كارولينا أريرا الإنسانية تحتدن روح التفرد كتعبير عن الأنوثة يتطلب إنتاج كل حقيبة حوالي الـ 11 ساعة ويعمل عليها 24 حرفيا في مشاغل الدار في أورينزي من أورينزي إلى برشلونة الإكسسوار الغير مرئي الشبيه بالسيمفونية الموسيقية أو The Invisible Accessory كما أشارت كارولينا ريرا للعطر الأول للدار الذي تم ابتكاره في العام 1988 كارولينا ريرا أو دو بارفان مزيج الياسمين ومسك الروم هوية أساسية تعكس الدعائم الجمالية للعلامة التجارية هكذا كانت بداية قصة هذا النجاح في العام 1996 انضمت ابنة المديرة الإبداعية للدار كارولينا إيريرا وتسلمت بذلك منصب الإدارة الفنية للعطور القاعدة العطرية للدار توسعت على مر العقود لتشمل اليوم 134 ابتكارا من قبل أشهر صانعي العطور أمثال ألبرتو مورياس، كارلوس بنايم وبالدعم الدائم والخبرة لإليزابيث فيدال صانعة العطور الأولى لدى مجموعة بوتش بعد دراسة الكيمياء الحيوية وهي درجة ساعدتها على إتقان الحرفة الخيميائية لتصميم العطور تمكنت كارولينا إيريرا من تقديم منتوجات أصبحت اليوم مرجعاً لأناقة القرن الماضي مثل عطر تو تو الشهير الذي لا يزال يتمتع بشعبية كبيرة بعد حوالي العشرين عاماً في الأسواق العالمية قصة سرد حكايات من خلال مكونات ومواد أولية عطرية عاشقة للسفر الفن التصوير الفوتوغرافي اكتشاف الثقافات وترجمة كل هذه التأثيرات في مكونات عطور تنبض بالأحاسيس المرهفة الذكريات الجميلة والخيال الجامح Again. I know. I <laughs> long, I, we meet many times throughout the years. And, and I always wanted to come uh, to Spain to meet you, to see you in your kind of uh, creative uh, hub uh, and space, to see how you work, to get to know you a little bit better. The weather is absolutely amazing. Incredible. Um, incredible. Even though, you know, the news is not so uh, positive out there um, socially, economically, with the scare going on, but there's a sense of positivity that I feel that this city has and ultimately this is something that I want to talk about that transmitting those emotions those feelings into art creativity and perfume I think it's wonderful <laughs> because I think it's always very important to carry the positivity with you everywhere you know sure. whether it's in um, fashion or in beauty or in art or literature you know it's always good because otherwise it's You know, it's sad to go and listen what everything's going on. You so have to have true. a bubble. So true. Of I'm going to start uh, the interview with a few kind of like references or taglines from famous people talking about the importance of perfume and how it kind of uh, triggers emotions, memories, uh, creativity, uh, strength for them. So the first one would be perfume is the art of making memory speak. Um, Are there a specific uh, scents that unleashed um, memories for you as a child? There are. There, I mean, there's a few. I think foremost is the scent of jasmine and tuberose. And uh, my mother, when we were young, before she was a designer, before she was known 
she used to mix oils of jasmine and tuberose. I remember going with her to buy these oils that she used to buy in at Bloomingdale's at the perfume workshop. Yes. So that smell for me is so her and so part of my childhood that sometimes I smell somebody using the original, Carolina Herrera original perfume, which that mix became that perfume and I immediately have an instant flashback. flashback to my childhood. That's one. It's so impressive, the power the, that the fragrance huge. has. Huge. Yeah. Then cut grass. You know, the smell of like, like freshly cut grass after a rainy day, the smell of dirt. The smell. Your taste is very specific. Yes, because I have very specific memories of, the, of those smells. And it's usually, they're, they're very much linked more to my childhood than to my adolescence where you don't pay attention to anything but yourself. And, um, and not so much to my adult life because I was working with perfume already and I worked with so many scents that I didn't have, I, I didn't connect to one particular one. I think it's something that was very organic. I don't think I could say living it then, this is going to empower me or this is going to give me a creative output. I think, and I think of this in raising my children, I think when you do things that come natural, and my mother, you know, she always cut her own flowers in the garden and put them in vases. She, my father used to cut the grass. She used to decorate herself. You know, they always talked about books, and about music. There was always music, movies. So when you grow up and around that, it sort of becomes part of your life, you know? Yeah. So I think, I'm sure it, ha it has had an effect, and I hope my children have grow up with that as well, but it's something that you do organic. I don't think you can plan it, really. Let's get to know you a little bit better. I know that you love traveling so much. You are influenced by specific cultures. We spoke earlier about your trip to India. You explained how much you love the Middle East for, for various reasons. Um, tell us a little bit about the creative process. What goes around in your mind before you start any creative journey? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Usually, I don't really travel for a project. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love traveling and I've traveled, like the first time I went to India, I was 20, right? And all those trips somehow stay in your mind. They, they influence you yeah. without knowing. Yeah. Images stay in, people you meet, colors, um, phrases, movies, situations. Mm -hmm. So then when we create a perfume, I sort of somehow extract all those places that I've been to and Without knowing again, I start constructing a script. I start constructing an idea, a concept, a woman, a man, a situation. And it's really fun, actually. What were some of the cultures that you were impressed by? Some well, of the cultures that obviously have a very strong link to perfumery and the history of perfume Well, Middle general. East for sure. And Middle East was a trip that I went for work mm -hmm. and that I discovered working mm -hmm. and I was you know, I always had an attraction to it, but I hadn't had a chance to go. And then the history and the legacy and the culture of perfumery there is incredible, mm -hmm. right? And I, I went and I literally was, was following smells around, you know? Everyone would walk and then smells here, smells there. And I would just follow them around and, and I would go to somebody's house and you had the, the smoke, you know, the incense burning yeah. and then the oils in the hand and then the perfumes. I was drunk in the very best way with smells. So I started questioning all these smells and I realized that they were very much local mm -hmm. and that to extract them and bring them to me was a challenge. I actually didn't even think of perfume growing up. My first perfume, which I think was Anais Anais, you know, when you're like a teen. 
I remember that perfume so right, well because it was bottle. my mom's perfume and I still remember it on the dressing table. It was such a beautiful, like a fantastic memory. It's like, but it's almost like that relationship you have with a lot of beauty products. I remember that perfume. Because you had the memory. I remember the Lancome mascara exactly. for some reason. You know what I remember? The hairspray. The hairspray, <laughs> the <and> that <laughs> one. Yes. I think we used to smuggle it in school and yeah. in the bathrooms. It was like, <laughs> you know what? That's another olfactory memory right yeah, there. The Elnet sure. smell. For sure. You know what's amazing about it, our industry is the fact that we get uh, a chance to, to sit and exchange ideas and ultimately be influenced by one another, regardless of the background that we come from. When you sit with your team that come from different parts of the world, um, how do you kind of exchange ideas? Uh, how does a day of working on a new concept with you and your team look like it's or sound like you know, or smell like, like well, I'll tell you, it sounds like if you if you're not following it's hard to follow the yeah. conversation yeah. because all of a sudden we get very excited and like you know Ellie will have an idea and I will have another idea and then the marketing team will have an idea and it's all because of that because of all the experiences we have had either with each other with perfume mm -hmm. with ourselves mm -hmm. with the memories we've created yeah. but usually we have something you know we know once we decide what we're going to do, we have an idea. Mm -hmm. We have, whether it's female or, or masculine or whether yeah. it's, you know, for everybody, like the confidential collection. Yeah. And then we have an idea of the woman or the man and the idea of, you know, the concept. And then we start working within that mm -hmm. script. But the great thing is that it's, it's all creativity. So we all chip in and we can say the craziest things because there's nothing is impossible. And then we try it and then, you know, the the factory will say, no, we can't do that because it's impossible to make or it's going to be too expensive or it won't look good or physically, mechanically, we can't build the bottle we want to build. So we throw it all out there and then we get the feedback from the technical. Just be responsible because it's no longer a very small crowd that you're talking yeah. to. Whether you want to or not, you're talking to a huge global yeah. crowd. But I think for me, I usually do it um, through organizations. Okay. Like with Carolina Herrera, I've been very involved with the perfumes with breast cancer awareness. So I, I do it through that. And then another, is, another way is that we're quite responsible with how we farm our ingredients, how we uh, treat the communities mm -hmm. that um, harvest the mm -hmm. ingredients. I, like, I, I, like you said, I went to India and I visited the fabric and I visited the fields and, and the women mm -hmm. and men who harvest the fields and we donate money and we, you know, we important. take care of these resources because A, they're limited and B, they're not really ours. You know, yeah. so we we do it in a way, in that way.